Hey friends, and welcome to an episode on .NET Tip. This time we'll talk about the library Mock. Okay, so we have started by scaffolding a .NET project. So here you can see how we are, first off, running .NET new SLN. That's going to give us a new solution. Then we have created a new web API. And lastly, what we've done is to add this API project into our solution via .NET SLN add. So those bits uh, are things that we have already done. If you're listening to this video, definitely make sure that you have a solution, that you have your API project. Now, as with all controller-based projects, as we have here at controllers, we start off with an API route. And as part of this video, we'll look at the mock library and see how we can utilize that uh, when we define our routes. Okay, so we've added the file cartcontroller.cs. Uh, inside of cartcontroller, we have three different uh, services, cart service, payment service, and shipment service. Now, as part of mocking a dependency, what we are saying is to be able to test the cart, we don't actually need all of these parts to work. So the idea is to inject uh, interfaces uh, inside of cart controller and test cart controller based on the fact that we mock away the things that isn't really about the cart controller. Now, for example, things that we want to mock could be that the payment service dot charge is being run or that a ship here is being called based on the result. So the idea of uh, bringing in a mock library at this point is to see that an interface, it can be mocked, whatever it's going to respond is being mocked, and we end up testing all the different flows as part of our application. Because we are interested to know that our business logic works when we are um, getting paid, but it also works when we're not getting paid, meaning we shouldn't ship something unless we are getting paid. So that's really the crew of the matter. Make sure that our code behaves correctly. And this is where Mock really shines. We see how we have an iCard service. It has a uh, method in it called total, and it also has items. And this is so we can make sure that we get some kind of uh, notion of a cart and it has items in it. So it, it is returning an I enumerable of type card item. Next, we also need an iPayment service uh, and the method charge. As I said before, we will use the mock library to take one of these interfaces and just respond uh, what it should be responding if it was actually implemented. So we are kind of hijacking the process of using an interface by saying, hey, use our mock instead and whatever it responds with just to test that application logic. And here we have the iShipment service. We can see that it has a ship method. That's something that we can uh, check later whether it was called in the correct context. And we also need a few models to be able to work on this. I address info, I card, and uh, card item. Uh, to be able to test all of this, we need a test project. So we can scaffold that. We're going to use NUnit, but you can use whatever library you want and, and scaffold that test library. And now we're adding the test library to the solution. Um, just to make sure that once we build our solution, we build our test project, we build our application or our web API project in one go. And this is us uh, adding a reference to the API project into our test project so it knows, so our test project knows how to uh, test the API. And lastly, we need to add the mock library or MOQ to the API test library. So it downloads all the files. If we just look at our files here for a second, we see that we have API, we have API test, and both of those have been added to our solution. So it knows all about it. So we see API and API test, so that's all great. This will, of course, look a little bit better in Visual Studio, but this is Visual Studio code, so we take what we can get, right? And we can also see as part of this project that it now is using NUnit and MOQ or mock and we are ready to have tests. So here we are adding a payment service mock. We are going to set up all the different mocks because we're going to end up uh, scaffolding an instance of our controller. But before we can do all that, we need to make sure that we are creating mocks and we create mocks based on an interface. 
So what it's going to do is to create an object uh, that we will be able to work with, that we're going to be able to instruct. So yeah, in lieu of, uh, or instead of using the actual instance of a payment service, we will use whatever the mock will give us. Now, this is an interesting piece. What we are saying here is that we are instructing our service mock by calling setup. Uh, we give it the ability to via a Lambda here to say, if someone calls the charge method, then I will return with true, which is very interesting, right? So given that someone interacts with, with our mock, given that someone calls charge, this means that if you remember the application logic that we will always uh, mock the fact that we will always get paid, right? In reality, your application logic might, you know, return something different depending on whether the user is actually paying you or not. But in this case, we pretend like the user is paying us. Now we change this mock a little bit. And the reason why we change it is because if you look at the charge method here, you see that it's actually taking two different things. It takes a uh, value that you charge a card with and a card itself. So a quick look back at our fact actual implementation, you see that it takes a total and it takes a card. And uh, this is a very interesting construct. We could send an actual value into here, but why not use the mock library and use it is any. So what we're saying here, regardless whether you pass in a zero, 50, 100, 1000, this will work. So this is a very important construct. It is any. So just any old double value, really. So now we have replaced our code with uh, that of uh, what the actual test will look like. So remember to use arrange, act, and assert as those three mantras uh, that you need to care about. In arrange, we set everything up. In act, this is what we're trying to do, right? We try to instantiate a controller, and based on that controller, we try to check out. And this is where we try to use a card mock and an address info mock to uh, call the checkout. And in the assert part here, we see how it's using the mock and we try to call the method verify. And what verify try to do is to see based on what I'm trying to do here, was this actually called and was it called once? So yeah, if we send in a card mock, if we instruct the shipment service in a certain way, if we set it up in a certain way, then it should work. I want to show you what a complete looking test class is looking like. Uh, we need the card controller. This is what we're about to test. We need a mock for the payment service. We need a mock for the card service and a mock for the shipment service. Card mock, address info mock, and items. Now in our setup stage, this is where we can set up the various mocks. All we're doing is to create instances with mock. And because these are generics, we provide it with the interface that we want to create a real concrete instance from. And yeah, we also want to set up the instruction here, as I said before, the setup method. Uh, what we want to tell it is essentially, if I send in this price, this item price, then you should be returning 10. So setup is when you have the ability to, to talk to a property or a method and do what you need it to do. And uh, you just chain it with a return here and say, if this happens, then do this return. We also set up a cart item with a mock. So yeah, once you've instantiated the mock, the actual concrete instance is gonna be found on the object property. Uh, the other setup here, it is calling the items method instead. So when we call item, we make sure that we get a bunch of items back. Um, so this is to simulate our cart. And uh, the card controller instance, this is where we provide the card service mock instance, the payment service mock instance, the shipment service mock instance. And here is a, a, a test. And uh, we are saying in this test should return charged. So we set up the payment service mock to say if any value here with it is any, if any double, and we send in our card mock, then we should say, hey, we are getting paid. And uh, after that, we call the active method on the controller checkout with the card mock, with the address info mock. And what should have happened at that point is because we are getting paid, then we are verifying that the uh, ship 
method has been called uh, with these uh, inputs, with these parameters, address info mock with these items, and it's only been done once. And this is the same thing to say we are being charged. So now we are covering the first application flow. Uh, in the other instance, the other test, what we're trying to say is that what happens if we don't get paid? So in this case, we're, se we're setting it up in a way that regardless of what uh, value we are sending in with the card mock object, we always need to respond as, hey, we didn't get paid. So once we call the checkout method in this point, what should happen is that the shipping method should not be called, right? Because we're not getting paid, therefore we don't ship the item, which means we call times never. This is the same thing as saying, yeah, this ship method was never called. So thereby we're testing the if in this controller uh, checkout method, we are testing the else. And let's say, see if all of this works. Okay, so let's do a .NET build, make sure that everything builds correctly, and then we can do a .NET test. As you can see, we have two pass tests. We are very, very happy about that. Let's just prove that our logic still works, right? So if we mess up the logic, if we're saying, if we don't get paid, right, this test should fail. Yeah, as we can see, this test now fails because what we're saying is here is that we try to verify, right? We try to say we actually shipped one item, which we didn't because we didn't get paid. So we can see that our application logic is standing up. And if you thought this video was good, please consider subscribing. Uh, I will create more .NET videos for sure. So hopefully I'll see you in another video.